Hi, I'm Julia Herman, a global market strategist at New York Life Investments, and I'm here today with Amanda Gallagher, our head of technology and data solutions. Amanda, you sit at the hub of tech capacity at New York Life Investments. Can you tell me how your teams have gone about assessing where AI can add value? About five years ago, we started a journey uh, to really rebuild our technology and data foundation focused on uh, modernizing our infrastructure, bringing all of our data together in a way that is clean and quality, um, and then really investing in talent. So at that time, we started building a bench of uh, data scientists um, who have in the last few years um, really run experiments on how AI, um, both predictive and generative, can impact our business, how it can solve problems that we have across teams at New York Life Investments um, and really just get good at um, delivering solutions around technology, data, and AI. And among all the potential ideas for how we use artificial intelligence, all the potential solutions out there, how do you go about prioritizing those potential projects? So for us, it's really a balance of what do we project the potential business value could be of an idea or a problem we're trying to solve with AI? Um, and then what is our confidence in how um, easy and effectively we'll be able to execute on that idea, right? Um, do we have the talent? Do we have the infrastructure to be able to operationalize, not just test? And uh, is the technology that's on the market um, there yet, right? Is it mature enough for us to be able to uh, really capitalize on the ideas of our employees here. And tell me more about that potential business value of these AI applications. Sure. So um, when we're evaluating any idea or problem, we're really looking at um, how many people or processes could this impact and to what magnitude, right? Is it um, an efficiency gain? Is it a, uh, a cost avoidance? Um, is it something that can really provide an enormous amount of value to someone where they're able to save a ton of time in their day and focus on more strategic things um, as part of their work or even more innovative projects. Uh, we also really look for um, not just those quantitative aspects, but uh, because it is oftentimes asking people across the company to take maybe time out of their day job and their daily responsibilities to run an experiment or work on a, a project with us related to AI? Do we have strong sponsorship um, and people who are really excited about making the time for this? That's a really important component that uh, we do look for when we're evaluating projects. Uh, but as we look at each idea and are really scoping out what to pursue and how we might prioritize our team's time, um, we're really looking at what is the potential if we hit it out of the park or even if we just de deliver the minimum possible value to the business, what it, what could that be? And then how does it stack up against all the other ideas that we've sourced um, throughout our global firm? Absolutely. So you've mentioned that there's an experimentation aspect here. We're looking for business value. How do you consider the broader feasibility of all of this? Because of course, I would imagine that uh, cost benefit versus cost savings is only one aspect of feasibility. It's when we, where we focus our actual internal development of AI solutions is on problems that would really bring us competitive advantage. It uh, leverages a lot of our proprietary data that we don't want to, uh, that, that is really important to stay private um, for our firm. Um, and really just deploying you know, our teams to focus on uh, the the really uh, hard problems that maybe we haven't seen other firms tackle um, that we can necessarily buy from. Your teams are doing so much work on diligence around these AI use cases. Can you share how that dovetails with the firm's broader artificial intelligence foundation? Absolutely. Um, so we work uh, very closely with um, the New York Life data science team, um, and leverage all the same infrastructure and, and processes around governance because governance is really important from a risk management perspective, from an understanding of 
the ethics surrounding AI and making sure we have a common approach to doing all of those things, um, while also um, enabling our teams across the company to act in a way that is nimble and um, operates at the speed of whatever business you're in um, and allowing your teams to really leverage their business expertise and apply it to the challenges that, that they're trying to solve for. The ethical use of AI is this huge topic that I think a lot of companies are still figuring out their approach to. So what guides you when you're thinking about such a huge and important facet of AI applications? Data is such a complicated topic um, and it, it with the advancement of artificial intelligence, which has been around for decades, right? And data has been around, data collection and aggregation and using it for any kind of purpose has been around for centuries, right? And so the problems that we're seeing around AI and the ethics around it are not new. It's just the speed at which these solutions are getting in people's hands are much faster than they used to be. Um, so it exacerbates the problem, right? Technology in itself is just a magnifier. It makes it magnifies good good things and it magnifies bad things as well. So that's why it's really important. Um, and and what I what I'm very hopeful about in the artificial intelligence space is having worked in technology and data my entire career. I've never seen conversations popping up about it so frequently, which means that us as an industry, us as just human beings, are awake to the challenges that that they can present um, and and talking about it, which is the first step. Um, so for us here at New York Life Investments, we have three guiding principles really when we're looking at any AI project and really anything that we're using data to do. Um, the first is, do we have the right people at the table? And what I mean by the right people at the table is, who are we designing a solution for? If it's for clients, if it's for employees, are they accurately represented around the table so that we can make sure that whatever experience we're delivering, whatever data we're using to do that, actually reflects who they are and what they need. Uh, the second is, do we understand the data we're working with? Is there transparency into it? Do we understand how it was formed and does any bias exist in it? And how do we control for that bias if so? And then finally, you know, once you have the right people around the table and you really understand the data that you're working with, are you asking the right questions of that data? Um, and just because you can do something, just because you can ask a question, doesn't mean you should. And I think that um, when it comes to what that means for our team, uh, we are really invested in making sure that we're treating the data that we're really the stewards of the way we would treat our own data, our mom's data, our families, right? And, and that is the same way we look at how we're designing solutions for our clients and our employees. Thank you, Amanda.